Hey everybody, welcome to video two in this series about AppWrite functions. So in the last video, I introduced you to what AppWrite functions are and how we can work with them. And in this video, we're just gonna go ahead and dive right in and start building and deploying our first function. So there's a couple of different ways we can actually build and deploy these functions, but in this video, we're gonna focus on the preferred method and also the fastest way to get started. And that's gonna be to use the GitHub integration and to use a starter template. So AppWrite actually has these templates ready for us to go. Essentially, it's just some boilerplate code to get a function up and running so we're going to use that we'll get started with it so let's just dive right in and see how we can do this okay so i always like to start my tutorials with a clean slate so i'm going to create a new project and then within that project is where i'm going to create my first function so if you don't already have a project set up go ahead and create one and if you don't have an account with AppRite, go to AppRite.io, register for an account and then this will redirect you to your console once you're signed up and then from there, you're gonna to wanna to create an organization and then a new project. So I have no projects here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one. We'll just call this my app. And let's just go ahead and hit create. And this is gonna take a couple of seconds here. So we'll wait for this to complete. And it looks like my project was created. So this will redirect me to the project. And here we see my new fresh empty project. So functions is gonna be just underneath databases here. So let's go ahead and click that. And we see this clean slate here with no function. So let's go ahead and create a new function. Now, the method we're going to use is to connect to GitHub. So we're going to have to authorize AppRite to make changes in our GitHub repository or our GitHub account. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and first connect it to my account. And then from that point on, AppRite will actually be able to create specific repos or listen to changes in specific repos. So we'll go ahead and click on GitHub. And I'm just going to go ahead and go to my account. We'll just go ahead and go to the bottom here. And I'm just gonna let AppRite have access to all my repositories. That's gonna make it easier. We'll hit save. And then while this is connecting, this will redirect me back to my AppRite account. So just to kind of show you where we're at, we'll go back to functions here. And if we go back to create functions, now we see we're connected to my GitHub repository. So on the right side here, we have the ability to look at templates here and there's different types of templates. So we have templates for prompt chat GPT. There's Stripe templates here, essentially, this is like boilerplate code that helps you get started real quick. So what we want to do is we just want to go to a starter template and this is going to be like a minimalist function. So the basic function you need to get started, and this is just going to make things a lot easier. So we'll use that starter template. We'll leave the name as starter function for the runtime. I'll select Node.js 18 and for the tutorial, just follow along with what I'm doing. It's going to make it easier. That way, if you, do, if you want to create something with your own runtime, you're not mixing things up, follow along here and then customize it later. So we have the ability to actually add to an existing repo or we can create a new repository. I want AppRite to actually generate a GitHub repo for me. So we'll leave it here. We'll hit next here and we'll just hit continue. So that's gonna be a private repository. Let's go ahead and hit next at this point. And let's see, we're gonna create a main branch and the function is gonna be added into that repo in the root directory. So I could specify a specific directory here. I'll just leave it blank. That's fine for me and we'll hit create. Okay, so this is gonna generate a function for us. And now I'm inside of my function. So we see the starter function. If we go back to the beginning, now we see we have our first function. And at this point, it's currently being built right now. So it's going through that process. And now this function is active. So by default, anytime a function is generated for us, we see this domain. So AppRite by default generates a domain for us that we can actually customize. So we can change this later. We won't focus on that, but let's go ahead and just see what our function looks like. So we'll go to that function. And this is that new GitHub repo. It's called starter. In here, I have a readme file. It tells me about the function. So on a get request, it returns hello world. Then it tells me about the post put and patch and delete methods here. So it's just giving me the basic information. I have a package.json file. This is giving me all the dependencies here. And if we go to the actual function itself in the source folder, inside of main.js is where our function sits. So we're actually gonna clean this code up even more just to better understand what's happening. We have some comments here, but we're gonna understand this a little bit better here in a second. So I'm gonna scroll through it once. So that's the function is 33 lines, but there's a bunch of comments here. We see the function here. We'll talk about what all this is right here. And then if we scroll down, we see that we're logging some stuff out. We're showing some errors. Then we're checking the request method. So if it's a get request, we respond with hello world. And then the rest of the calls are gonna be with this JSON response. So text response and a JSON response. So pretty simple function. So let's, let's actually go ahead and execute this and see what happens. So if we go back here, we can actually 
First of all, um, I actually want to see the build logs here. So within our function, we saw that it was building and now it's active. If we go to the build logs, this is where we can see as our function is being built, where we can actually see all those logs. And then if we have any issues, we'll see them in here. So the build logs are really useful for any time when we have any issues. So we'll go to that domain here and we'll just click on that. This is the automatically generated domain for us. And I'll zoom in here and here we see hello world. So that's the first way to execute a function. Now, if we want to execute this from our console, we have a different way to do this. We can go to executions and here we see that our function has been executed twice. It tells us the, the trigger for that. In this case, it was an HTTP call. It was a get request and I can just go ahead and execute this again. We can select the method here. If we go to post here, I can actually go ahead and add in some headers, add in the body and so on. So I can execute this directly from here. And if I go to one of these executions, I'll actually see those logs. So we see that error log and then hello logs. And that was in this section of the function. So we're actually able to log that out. And one thing to note is we won't actually see the response and that's for security reasons. So if we go to the body here, it tells us right here, that's for security reasons. We won't see it. Go ahead and just log out any information that you wanna see. So we won't be able to see that in a console, but if you use something like Postman or any other method to test a function, you can actually see that response. Okay, so we have our deployments, we have our executions. We talked about the domain. This is where we can customize that domain. We're not gonna go into this now, but let's jump into the settings here and talk about some configuration for this function. So in settings here, this is where, again, we can execute the function here. We can change the name. We can change the runtime. Now, if we ever modify that GitHub repo, this is where we can change the entry point. So right now we're at source and main.js. If we ever change that input, we can go ahead and modify that here. So the function needs to know where to look for Git settings. If we ever want to change the directories, the branches, this is where we can update all that. And then the build settings, this is very important. So at this point, we just run npm install. It's going to go to package.json and install all the dependencies. So build settings are very important in this process. And this is where you can update those. And then if we go down here by default, when we use a starter template, we need to set or by default, it sets, sets the execute access for us to the role of any. So that means anybody can execute this function at some point, uh, depending on what your functions are doing, you might want to change this. So you don't want just anybody executing all the functions at all times. This is where we can modify this. Now, the events here, this is going to be the events that actually trigger this function. So we talked about this earlier, but we can listen for database events here, listen for specific collections or documents, even other functions. So these are ways to actually listen for events instead of triggering it with an HTTP method. We have the function listen to things that happen within our app. So very useful. And then we can also schedule events. So just like a cron job here, we can have a function run every 15 minutes, every hour, uh, once every Monday on the first Monday of the month, that's really up to you. You can actually schedule functions to run in any increment that or any set time that you want it to run in. Now, if we scroll down here, we'll see our environment variables. These are function level environment variables. So we have global environment variables that we can set, and those can be accessed from any function. And these are function level environment variables that can only be accessed from this specific function. So let's say we want to set up a Stripe API key. So we'll just go ahead and set that up right here. And then we can go ahead and access this from the function. So really good to hide information. This is where we set those variables. And at this point, we're just gonna go ahead and dive right in. We're gonna clone this repo. I'm gonna update this function and redeploy it so we can actually start learning how to work with this function. Okay, so for this next step, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have Git configured and installed locally. So make sure you have it. And let's just go ahead and grab the URL to this repo. So grab that URL, let's go ahead and open up your terminal and we'll just do git clone and I'm gonna run this from my desktop. So the function will now be local on my desktop. We'll just go ahead and hit enter there. We'll clone that and I'm gonna close out this terminal and we'll open up VS code. So we're gonna modify this function now. So I'll open this up, go to my desktop. We see this starter function and here we go. So we see the readme file, the package.json file, and let's go into this file right here and remove anything that doesn't give us just the bare minimum function here. So we'll go ahead and remove all these imports. We'll take out all these comments here. Let's remove even all these logs. And let's see. So I'm gonna take away this condition right here. Let's take out all the comments, remove this response. And this right here, 
is the bare minimum for a function. So we just export the function. It's an async function. Here we have the context object that's just destructured. We'll talk about that in the next video. But then we just have our response. So we just do response.send. This is just going to give us back a string value. And we'll just say function was updated. So we're just going to leave ourselves a note and let's just go ahead and push this function back up. So the idea here is to show you what the minimalist function looks like and then how we can actually make this change. So we'll save that. I'm going to open up my terminal. We'll do get status. Okay. Get add and we'll just do dot right there. Get status. And then we'll just do get commit. And for the message here, we'll just say updated function. Okay. So now we can just do git push dash u origin main. Okay, so at this point, if we jump back into my function here, we're gonna see it building. So we clone the function, we made a change, and we push this back up, and now it's being built. So in our GitHub repo, we're gonna see this change. So it's building, let's go ahead and check out that repo. We're gonna see the changes. Now it's listening for this change. So we have a clean function. Now it's active and ready to go. If I go to domains, Actually, I guess I could have just refreshed that one, but let's open up a fresh domain. And here we go. The function was updated. And that's it for this video. The idea was to build and set up a function. In the next video, we're going to dive right in and start breaking down each part of our function here. So we want to understand what's the context object, how can we actually get environment variables, and so on. So we're really going to dive into the actual function and better understand what's happening here.